Matt Dunstone, the sheriff, and Aaron Pinkoff. What's your nickname, actually, Aaron? I've never asked you that. I don't think I have one, really. Not, not, no. not quite cool enough. No. Where does this year rank for you both potentially and what it could be for your curling lives? Yeah, I mean, a uh, chance to play for a spot at the Olympics is obviously what any athlete, I think, kind of dreams of. So it's, I'd say, kind of ranks pretty high in my curling career so far. So, yeah, looking forward to it. I mean, we've had this team now for, for three years, or most of this team anyways, for three years. And, um, you know, you when you're putting a team together, the, the three and a half years just seem so far away. And, and yet here we are kind of three, four months out. And, um, you know, it's, it's very exciting. But on the flip side, like I, I reflect on those three and a half years um, kind of leading up to this and just very thankful um, for those moments and how much this team's actually grown. And, and you know, kind of regardless of the outcome um, of what happens in the next few months here, um, just with how much we've grown as curlers and as people, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just very proud of this team. And, and you know, it's, this is kind of the, the fun part of it all. Um, we, we put in three and a half work, three and a half years of work now. And, uh, you know, just to, to kind of see where the chips fall. And, you know, at the end of the day, if we go to the Olympics, then, uh, you know, dream come true. If not, we have lots to be proud of. I was thinking it's got to be a pretty good time of life for you guys. And I made some notes here. So you're in your mid-20s. You're both defending provincial curling champions. Matt's a back-to-back -back Briar Bronze medalist. Two straight Scotties appearances for you, Aaron. New homeowners. Uh, Matt's got a new job. He's a member of the KGCC. Uh, you got a great gig at Pacific Sport. Both of you are in with a shot of competing in the Beijing Olympics. Are you able to kind of soak that in, all that in right now, this stage of life? No, no, I'm not, because my golf game's in shambles, Marty. <laughs> the biggest piece of them all is missing. Um, <laughs> yeah. you, know, it, you know, it's... When you put it like that, we're so fortunate and, you know, that the support system, whether it be our friends, our family, um, you know, we, our fans, like we have, we have so much support around us, our employers, right? Like there, there's just so much support around us and, and none of this is ever possible without them. And, you know, just listening to you say that, it just, it's just a, another reminder um, as, to, as to why we should be so thankful for those who have helped us out along the way, because, um, you know, it just, None of this is even remotely possible without that. Kind of just made me even reflect about even last night, I went to my parents' house and my mom's hemming my curling pants. So just even little things like that, like that, you know, add up like the little helpful things that, you know, our support system has been able to do for us. So yeah, it truly all adds up and thanks mom. <laughs> we're, uh, we're, we're definitely surrounded by people who like to make it just uh, a little bit easier for us along the way. Actually, speaking of curling gear, I probably should have asked this question first because I know it's top of mind for everybody. Do we see the black leather hat this season come back and make another appearance? You know what? I uh, that that one is forever retired. You know, it's uh, <laughs> as, as as you can see here. As soon as uh, we we wore that hat or I wore that hat and won the slam, um, we we had some people, uh, well, some people, um, a company in Winnipeg approach us and, and wanted that hat spot actually. So we do have a corporate sponsor now that is uh, has full rights to the hat. Um, maybe we'll have to get a leather version of the hat, <laughs> made up, um, just to kind of find that happy medium for all. But uh, you know, as of right now, uh, we, we Team Dunstone has one hat and and one hat only, and it's the one I'm wearing right here. You must be gutted about that leather hat being retired. I was just trying to think of where it is in the house. I think it's uh, maybe I hit it somewhere. Who knows? It may never be found again. Who are the other kind of prominent curling couples in Canada? Jennifer Jones, Brent Lang. They're married. Mike and Don McEwen. Yeah. Brett and Jocelyn Gallant slash Peterman. Mm -hmm. um, There's quite a few, actually. There's quite a few. Yeah. 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 Um, so who's the who's the first couple of Canadian curling? Ooh. I'll let you answer that one. Okay. Like resume wise? Well, I don't know. Just in general, I mean. <laughs> and do you have a claim to the throne? If if it's resume yeah, wise, then it's and, it's Jones and Langer. Yeah, they're got a few titles under their belts for sure. Yeah. Any more uh, photo shoots in store for you guys after your <laughs> curling <laughs> calendar? <laughs> you know, uh, that might have been a one-time thing for us. <laughs> that uh, that 
the, the photo shoot idea has retired. It's in the same box as my leather hat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, uh, you know what? We shouldn't say that. We should never yeah. say never. I mean, for charity. Would, Absolutely. We, we, would do, again, we would do it a hundred times yeah. over again. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know. It, you, you, you can't really top one that. One. I mean, it's going to be tough to top that for a while. You got to let that one sit, I think. That's for just me. the thing. We kind of, we got rid of all of our ideas, all the good ideas we had on the first photo shoot. Yeah. So, I mean, we'd, we'd need a long time in between to think of a bunch of other ideas first. The last couple question, but is there, have you settled on the couple names? Is, is there, is it out there? Is it like, is it Dunscott? Is it Pinkstone? What, is there anything out there that's been, been nailed down? Probably Duncott. <laughs> we get Duncott or Pinstone. Pinstone. Yeah. I haven't really seen one nailed down. Well, 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 we'll let you be the deciding yeah. factor for that one. Okay. Yeah. None, none of them, none of them really stand out as being all that. I'd say Pinkstone's a bit better, but we'll Pink leave stone. that one. Over. <laughs> yeah. Where does the, the K come from? Oh, the sea, the sea, oh, the sea yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. It's a stretch. I knew what you were saying, Marty. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to talk about the marketing stuff. And normally that's like anti journalists to be like, tell me about your sponsors. But I think it's actually pretty interesting because I've noticed a lot more from both of your social media accounts. It seems like you're getting more action from sponsors. Can you list off all of your sponsors? Yeah, we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. So hoping I. Don't leave any out, but um, you know, major sponsor wise, we have Outland Living that's come on board this year. Oh, and last year actually, um, a couple other major sponsors: Warner Rentals, Family Glass, both um, locally local uh, businesses, huge supporters of sport in our community. So, super thankful to have them. Um, New Floors Camloops, Best Western Plus Camloops, um, equipment sponsors: Hardline, Asham. Um, K.R. Brown, Kern's Dad, K.R. Brown Heating and Venting, City Center Auto Service, uh, Enviro Shreds, um, MNP Kelowna. So a lot of, um, I apologize if I'm forgetting, but a lot of like local um, businesses that have really, you know, stepped up to help us. And we really feel like their support whenever we go places, we're in touch with a lot of them. Oh, Total Health Clinic, that's another one that's a local business. So yeah, really appreciative of, of the support because it's obviously we're not, you know, full-time curlers yet. So we, we do rely heavily on sponsorship. So we're obviously super appreciative of, of those businesses. Matt, I think a lot of yours are more Saskatchewan based, but what, what are they? Yeah, we basically got uh, Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Alberta covered. Uh, we, we haven't, uh, we haven't quite taken our, uh, taken our jackets to BC, but uh, maybe that'll be uh, for next season. Um, but uh, we got Sask Canola, uh, Agromax, Core Grain, uh, North Star Industries, Atlas Apex Roofing, um, Connexus Credit Union, who's actually a new one uh, for us this year. So we're super happy to have them with us now. Uh, Apex Plumbing and Heating, uh, Pleasant Valley Farms, Gallon Insurance, Hardline Curling is our equipment sponsor, um, Inlet and Autoline, as we see right here on my hat, and Pleasant Valley Farms. And one more, we got Cork Shoes as well, who is our official off-ice gear um, supplier. How much of your, I guess, curling income does the sponsorship side, like what's the percentage of that? Yeah, you know, it's it, it kind of fluctuates over the years just because like some, some sponsors we have um, on multi-year deals, some are just one year. So, I mean, there's a little bit of unsureness, I guess, when it comes to that. Um, you know, we're we're very fortunate that um, some of our corporate sponsors do make up some of our annual income, um, which again, it's just, it's another one of those things that just makes our life that much easier because um, I mean, you, there's, there's not a whole lot of money to be made playing in the events themselves um, that, that we have here. Um, but, you know, from a, from an overall sponsorship and support standpoint, um, especially with what we've done uh, at the Briar the last couple of seasons, um, personally, for me, this is definitely the most support um, on that side of things that our team has ever had. Has anyone approached both of you to do like a commercial together or like a cereal box? You too. Maybe Kamloops this week. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> or Kamloops last week. Maybe we should chat a little bit about yeah. doing a little commercial action. Yeah, you'll probably have to pay us somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, but uh, you know, maybe that uh, you know that could be in the future. We're taking applications. We'll say that. Yeah, actually, while we're on sponsors, thanks to New Leaf Produce Market and to Twin River Painting for sponsoring Camloops last week. Yeah, what about mixed doubles? I, I actually asked Aaron this in a text about um, your guys' interest in doing more mixed double stuff. And was it basically just impossible to do this year? And what about like mixed doubles as far as the Olympics goes? I mean, was it just impossible for you to do? Go ahead. You look ready to say something. Yeah, well, you know, obviously with us, huge focus is, I mean, I love playing stuff. I think it's super fun. It's kind of a totally different discipline than the four person game. Obviously it's super fast paced. Um, yeah, I would love to play more of it for sure. Um, obviously with it being an Olympic year and, you know, the four person game is a priority for us. And having jobs outside of curling as well you know it's hard to fit it all in when we're on the road I think you're out of town like most of November yeah October yeah. so it's, it's it's a big time commitment to do both um and it's yeah it's it mixed doubles has kind of gotten to the point where it is its own discipline now and it's it, it takes up just as big of a commitment as the men's and the ladies does and, and that's why you see certain players out there that don't show themselves in the mixed doubles game until 18 months before the Olympics kind of thing. You know, it's just, just to, to dedicate a four year cycle to it. A lot of players aren't doing that yet, but some are. And I, I think just with where we're at and, and where our focus is, um, you know, it's just a, it's a, just a difficult thing to balance at this time. And um, definitely uh, wouldn't say, wouldn't say never to that, um, but maybe just a little bit more planning kind of going into it. We've gone out and played um, some very competitive events and mixed doubles, but I don't think we've, ever really truly worked at it the way it should be if you're trying to make an olympic run i think is a fair way to say that you, you got because you were hoping to get into the nationals though right and that just kind of got all weird yeah yeah we could uh we could dive into that one a little bit but uh we, i don't know if we have enough time for that but yes it was how the whole nationals thing played out for the bubble um was very unfortunate and just wasn't right to be totally honest, but that's just the way it was, it played out. The Olympics qualification stuff. I know it's pretty convoluted and I don't need to dive into um, feelings on how that whole process worked. What's not too complicated is the Ottawa event for both of you. It's top three women's teams and top two men's teams from that event go to the Tim Hortons trials. And then from there you win that year into the Olympics. Is that correct? hundred percent. Yeah. So Aaron, let's start with you that's not that far away. That's, that's a reachable goal. That's, that's um, not too complicated to think about. So where are you at right now in um, understanding what's ahead of you? Yeah. It's, uh, it's September 1st looming. It's like, holy summer's over and we're in kind of full curling swing. It's yeah, we leave um, on the 21st. So it's coming up less than a month. And yeah, I think we're like just excited. We, we played our first event. Um, um, last weekend and you know that went super well so we're you know building on kind of all the things we learned um in that event because we really actually you know haven't played that much as a foursome since Sam rejoined the team um so still kind of learning even communication stuff ironing out some things and um yeah obviously happy to come out with a win in our first event and kind of ride that momentum into uh the plane event but uh yeah, we have one more event for that. So we're definitely excited to get back in the swing of curling. Basically a week today or a week tomorrow, I head to Toronto. Um, we're getting a couple of practice days in, uh, in Oakville. And then starting next week and the weekend after Labor Day is our first event. Um, then we're going to have four days off, four or five days off, and then off to Ottawa for the playing event. So uh, we're, we're kicking it right into high gear right away here. Um, our reasoning behind that is, is we kind of proved to ourselves last year um, just with the whole bubble and, and how that all went, you know, just if, if we can prepare a certain certain way that that really worked, um, that we don't have to go out and play a ton um, early on to, to feel like we're at our best. Um, so a bunch of our focus was just trying to, to in, in those three, four weeks, whatever it is now up to Ottawa, um, just preparation wise, we don't need the games. If, if we get five, six, seven games in beforehand, um, you know, that's a bonus, but just we've really figured out um, what sort of preparation we need 
um, with minimal amounts of games to be at our best. And, and that's what we proved to ourselves last year in Calgary. And just thoughts on what it would be like to compete in the Olympics. What do you think it'd be like? Yeah, you know, it's uh, pretty, pretty hard to put into words and, um, you know, kind of the, just to compartmentalize kind of the magnitude of what the three, four or five months are kind of looking like. A lot of my focus has just been, um, you know, between uh, the, the Ottawa playing event and the trials in Saskatoon, it's, it's about 13 to 14 wins. Um, you got, you got to win that many games and you'll be off to the Olympics. And that's kind of been my focus and it's helped kind of narrow in um, what needs to actually be done. And, and it makes it seem that much smaller because, you know, 13 to 14 wins um, usually have that by the first month, first month and a half of the season. Um, so it really kind of makes everything a little bit smaller, easy, easier for me to think um, about what we're actually doing. Um, you know, it's, I don't know, it's that, that moment and, you know, to, to have the gold medal at the trials and, and put on the Canadian jacket, that's, that's why you play the game. And, you, you know, it's a really tough tough thing to think about how cool it would actually be. Um, but, you know, I just feel really ready for it, really calm um, and really confident, quite frankly, with the amount of, of effort and, and trust we have um, amongst this team. We, we really do believe that we can do this and, and know that we can. So it's, it's a very exciting feeling. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know um, if I could describe to you what the feeling is actually like. But, uh, you know, if there, if there was tears after a slam win, I'll, uh, I'll guarantee there's tears after a trials win. Yeah, I think there were a few tears after that slam win. Aaron, I probably asked you the same question when you were like 16, but I'm basically asking the same one now. I'm curious to see if you could dig that up and see in your archives <laughs> if you did actually, you know, ask us that back then. But, yeah, similar to what Matt said, I don't think you fully, until you're in that moment, would probably be able to know exactly what it would feel like. I think... Yeah, probably be a bit of an out-of-body experience, but uh, obviously what, what any kind of kid who gets into sport ultimately dreams about doing. So, yeah, same same kind of, I guess, train of thought as Matt. And, you know, we've certainly put a lot of work in, so we're, we're just hoping that we can, you know, represent ourselves as best as we can and, yeah, see what happens. Anything else you guys wanted to add? Yes, I forgot one sponsor when I was listening it up, Mickles Industries. So I just want to say thank you to them as well. I appreciate the time again. Thanks, guys. Marty, thanks. Yeah, thank you.